pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yo prometo lealtad a la bandera de los Estados Unidos de América y a la república que representa una nación bajo Dios entera con libertad y justicia para todos. I love science. Let's pretend we are ecologists, studying the relationships between living things and their surroundings. You want to learn as much as you can about the kinds of plant life and animal forms in this forest. Where do we start? First, you would select the exact area you want to study and locate it. Next, you'd probably use a compass as an extra sense of direction and line up the boundaries. Okay, you've set off an area 50 feet on each side, or about 277 square yards. Now, let's take a close look at this area to see what we can find. Well, our first animal is a small toad. <laughs> no, it won't give you warts. I think it's the hummingbird. Yeah, possibly. I remember them flying into the hummingbird's nest and nest and playing with it. What's that? It's a caterpillar. This is the larval stage of an animal that will eventually make a cocoon and then change into a big moth or butterfly. Now, why is this particular animal living here? Is it because the forest provides its food? You might find evidence that caterpillars eat the leaves from the trees that make up this forest. Later, you can find out what kinds of trees these are by comparing the pictures of the leaves with a reference book. It's not always a good idea to remove things from the woods. So, if you don't have a camera, you can make a detailed sketch of some of the leaves. Then, we might come to know more about the caterpillar and the trees. Sometimes, smelling a leaf will help you identify a tree. Crushing the leaf will help release the odor. Can you remember particular odors, such as a leaf? How about a mint leaf? A scientist would sniff it, remember the odor, and use this sense to identify the tree for another person. 
There are many other things to smell in the forest. In a clearing, there might be flowers growing. Some flowers have a certain kind of odor, while other flowers have no smell at all. You might also find evidence that these woods are frequented by larger animals when you aren't around. This is a wild turkey, the country cousin of the farm-raised turkey you eat at Thanksgiving. By using our senses, we can notice that part of the forest is dying. We know funguses will grow only on dead material. So these funguses indicate that part of this tree is dead. In the forest, all living things, plants and animals, eventually die and fall to the ground. Dying is part of the life cycle of the forest. This tree has started to decay, helped by funguses, mushrooms and bacteria. Dead plants eventually become part of the soil. New plants will grow in the rich soil, and new animals will eat the plants or their fruit. In this way, the cycle of life continues in the forest. You can also learn about the forest by listening. Birds are often identified by their songs alone. This is the sound of a cardinal. And that sounds like the call of a wood thrush. We can't see him either. But you can learn a great deal with just your sense of hearing. A few feathers like these might be all you see of a bird. Must be a little bird's feather. You should collect any feathers you find. We'll study them later. For lunch today we have an oven fried chicken drumstick chicken and strawberry chef salad, a stacker box lunch, potato smiles, cherry tomatoes, ranch dressing, assorted fresh fruit, and a choice of milk.